a couple of things that we we always like to start these with. Um, every year is a little bit different, but certainly some topics are repeated. And so for some of you, this is the fourth time that you have seen some of these ideas because now you're seniors on the team. Um, and so as a result, you might have a slightly different role tonight um, than uh, someone who's seen this for the first time. Um, so just keep that in mind that some of this, this, this material is, is new to some and reminders for others. Um, we'll have a breakout room uh, later. And so um, if you have seen some of the thing, these things before, uh, that's an opportunity for you to, to model what you've learned, but also to leave space for others to try as well. Um, and then as always, especially for tonight's topic, uh, please remember that uh, this isn't a, a once and done thing. Um, this is something that continues for, for every, every meeting, every Robots After Dark. Uh, we are constantly practicing and, and refining these skills. Uh, so I'm Jeff Schmidt. Um, I'm the lead mentor of Husky Robotics, and I'm uh, honored to get to introduce our facilitators this evening. And so we have joining us uh, two of our mentors, Mr. Gupa, Gupta, and Ms. Lee, um, and I will let them take it away. Awesome, thank you, Mr. Schmidt. Yeah, I will get it started. I'm Jesse Lee, I'm a mentor of the Huskies, um, and I'm also a mechanical engineer. So um, I've seen a lot of different team cultures and different things, aspects of this, um, both professional and as mentoring the Huskies. Um, we're not, experts on this, but we do want to start the conversation and keep some of the amazing things that we've been doing in the past few years going. So, um, but yeah, we're really excited to share this with you all. And we will be sharing these slides after. So if you don't want to take notes, you don't have to. Um, so we'll get started um, with a simple definition. What is team culture? Um, so it's comprised of attitudes and behaviors to achieve a shared vision. So we think a certain way and we act a certain way and these help us work towards our common goals. So before we get into some of these attitudes and behaviors, what are our goals? We'll touch briefly on it. Um, so I won't read the whole mission, but as a team, we've established that our main goals as a team are maintaining and building relationships with the community, strengthening our robotics family, preparing our team for the future, and becoming a world-class robotics team. And for those joining us from other teams, uh, think about your own team's North Star or stars um, that align your team. So what does culture have to do with these goals? Um, I've, I've personally seen how unmotivating a poor team culture can be, but in contrast, how powerful a strong team culture can be. Um, I've known that ro engineering was the right thing for me since I was in a ro robotics team in high school. Um, but unfortunately a poor team culture in my professional career had me questioning whether it still was for a very short time. Um, I feel so fortunate that I was mentoring the Huskies at the time and was reminded of how much I love engineering and I stuck with it. So you never know how much a team culture can impact someone. So now that we know the why, let's jump into the how. So we're going to start with an activity in the chat. So you'll type your answer, but wait to hit send until we say so. So what are some current team beliefs and behaviors that help us achieve our goals? Um, everyone should type at least one thing, but feel free to type more. Uh, if you're new to our team, feel free to include things from other experiences, other teams, um, any other groups that you want to share. A one word answer is totally acceptable. Uh, these are going to be things like any beliefs, attitudes, behaviors, activities, our keep fix tries, our organization day, checklists, training, anything you want to include. So I'll give a, a little bit of time and get your answers typed into the chat, but don't hit send yet. All right, does everybody have something? 
All right, everybody go ahead. Go ahead and hit send. What do we got? Teamwork, trust, helping others, gracious professionalism. <laughs> that's a that's probably the first one I should have said. Collaboration. Positive. Po I've heard a lot of positivity. Um KFT. Yep, keep fix try. Everybody contributes. Linear. Yeah. Yeah, there's some literal tools and more hypothetical tools for sure. Food. Yes. Wow. Sprint planning. Nice. Okay. These are awesome. Yeah, we're going to cover a few of these. But thank you. That is really cool. All right. So I do want to give a little bit of a refresher. Some of you may have seen this um, many times but we'll, we'll keep it brief and I'm excited to share it with our newer members. Um, so the edge method is a strategy taken from scouts that gives us a framework for teaching skills. So explaining is not just the how, but the why we do something. And this is a good opportunity to pull in others who have expertise and can help explain. Uh, demonstrating is all about having an appropriate pace. So somebody who is newer can either keep up or isn't bored and bogged down. Um, guide is when we need to demonstrate patience and not try to take over and let somebody make mistakes. Um, and enabling is when everyone is ready, ensuring they have all the tools they need to succeed on their own. Two games is something that is about it's a guide for balancing our priorities. So while we do want to win worlds this year, um, there may be times where we're better off compromising some immediate success in favor, in favor of sustainability or preparation for next year's game. So an example would be if we take extra time to train two new team members a skill, rather than performing that skill ourselves really quickly, while it takes longer, now we have three people that can perform that skill. And those people can build on those skills and train others. Compassion is empathy in action. It's seeing challenges through another person's eyes, putting yourself in their shoes, asking yourself, how might they be feeling? But then taking it one step further and working to help them through that challenge. This is true team support that makes a significant difference in the experiences of the people around you. And then I have a few more. So servant leadership is something that we've been talking about for many years. Uh, the picture here is a word cloud that we did in last year's workshop of words that describe a servant leader. Is, uh, is anything blocking? Like, can you see it well? You see the whole screen? Good. Okay. Um, so just as it says, putting the needs of others first. Um, it's leading from behind. It's when not limited to people in named leadership positions either. We want everyone on the team to feel like they can be a servant leader. Anytime you can be a guide, a mentor, a friend, you can shift your actions to help them succeed and put them first. Um, and I think we might get some more of begin with the end in mind in a future workshop, but, uh, just to touch on it briefly, it's, it's just like how we, when we hear the new robotics game and you start planning your strategy, your robot, your design, your marketing, because you know, the outcome you want, you have a plan to get to get to the end in the same way. You can take a moment to think about the outcome you want to have whenever you interact with someone. Um, perhaps it's having a better working relationship with them. Um, it can reframe our thoughts and our actions and align them to our end goal, which sounds easy, but takes some practice. And team player mindset is something we will talk about more uh, later on in this presentation. But here are some words from another previous uh, workshop that help describe kind of the mindset we want to have 
to be a good team player. So now we want to get into some of the newer stuff and also um, kind of sharing more in depth about a few other aspects. And there's actually two traps that we will get into. So the first is active welcoming. Um, one second, let me get my notes for this. I think my printer uh, messed up. So if we want to have a strong team where everyone that wants to participate is not only allowed, but empowered to contribute, there are small ways we can think and act that have a big impact on others. Being tolerant is not enough. It's not enough to just be nice or accepting. To truly welcome all, especially traditionally unwelcome groups, requires active welcoming. I'm not an expert on this, but I can at least start the conversation. It's all about feeling noticed, valued, and included. There are some little things we can do when when somebody is new to our team and we want to welcome them it can be as simple as saying their name instead of saying hey you could say hi noga uh you can say thank you for helping with that it takes consistent and frequent positive feedback even if it's obvious or small or if their effort didn't pan out even just Thank you for offering to help with that. It makes a big difference. This goes with praising action frequently, especially their first steps. When you do something that goes unnoticed, it's hard to feel welcome in a new group. Listen, ask questions, and provide feedback. When we don't say what we're thinking, when things are going well, which is easy to do. This absence of feedback leaves room for someone to interpret our thoughts towards them as negative. An example is, imagine if I share an idea and you say, yeah, I'm gonna assume you don't think I should participate or you think my idea wasn't that good, but that's not your intent. On the flip side, if you are the person that needs that feedback, you can ask before you assume, what do you think of that idea? It's a 200% accountability, which we'll talk about more in future uh, sessions. But yeah, it's important to verbalize our expectations. Others can't read our thoughts. And making it safe. We'll talk about making it safe more in Crucial Conversations um, but when making it safe, it's about recognizing that when we're in a new uh, team, we're especially vulnerable. One little way we can support new members is um, when we explain things, start very high level and then dive into the details. And use simplified language at the start alongside technical. For example, we're placing the Robo Rio the brain of the robot in the CAD model, the 3D model, which isn't the same as talking down to someone. We want to model the behavior that we want to see. Patience, respect, and compassion. Another small action that can have a big impact when we assume something about someone else, uh, even subconsciously, most people aren't blatantly discriminatory, so what we want to get our brains thinking about is very subtle ways in which people are treated differently based on something entirely unrelated to the task at hand. Here's some less obvious assumptions we want to challenge, and this is not an exhaustive list. So if they're new or young, this does not necessarily mean they are naive. Maybe they've 
already worked on cars and they, they know how to use the tools around them. If they're physically small, it doesn't necessarily mean they're weak. If they're struggling, it doesn't necessarily mean they're incapable of the task. Maybe there's something that you can do to help with what they're struggling with and remove a barrier. Uh, don't make assumptions about what someone does or does not know or can or cannot do. If you assume they can't, they will be discouraged because you underestimated them. But if you assume they can and they can't, they might feel overwhelmed. Along with the struggling, always ask permission instead of forcing your help. Don't take tools out of someone's hands or take a heavy box from them. Instead of, here, let me help you, you can ask, need any help? And trust them to answer, trust their answer. Um, quiet does not necessarily mean uninterested. Uh, don't assume just because you don't know someone yet that they don't want to talk to you. And no issues being brought up does not necessarily mean there's no issues, especially with the team culture. It's hard to speak about some of these things. Now I want to talk about some traps that are easy to get into in all of engineering and in life in general. Um, one mentality that feels right at the time, but is a trap we need to challenge is perfection. Engineering is all about continuous improvement and solving problems, but applying that methodology to humans can lead to chronic stress, burnout, imposter syndrome, and an unhealthy shift in the why we do something or why we might avoid something. Perfectionism can be a driver to put in effort, but success that comes from that effort is not from the perfectionism and perfectionism can drive us in the wrong direction. It can keep us from starting just because we don't think we can do it perfectly. It can make us spend too much time or effort on one thing, or it can cause us to give up at the first sign of failure. It can also lead to more stress than necessary along the way. To be clear, we do recommend putting in the effort it takes to be great and having high standards, but we don't recommend letting perfectionism drive. Perfectionism comes from the fear of rejection. It's trying to keep others from seeing our flaws, but that fear isn't always realistic and it's not always easy to overcome. Some things we can work on to embrace instead of perfect is good enough, which is good enough. Uh, and progress over for perfection or perfection is the enemy of done. And I want to say this one very slow. It's okay to just learn from a mistake. It's okay to just learn from a mistake. Another trap that can get us is all or nothing mindset, which can kind of feel like perfectionism too. So they go hand in hand. Um, it's a common trap that there, we see only two options, um, which we don't want to wait until we do something perfectly. Uh, a mistake in one area does not nullify all the good you've done. So if you do something that's 90% amazing, we can tend to see the 10% that wasn't right. You can be a good person and have some things to learn about treating people right. So all or nothing would think that either you're a good person or you're a bad person. Um, and we need to kind of try to break down some of these black and white assumptions into small manageable chunks. An example would be uh, thinking that I need to clean and declutter an entire room when maybe I could just get started with one drawer or one shelf. All right, now I'll hand it over to Mr. Gupta with our next activity. All right. Thanks, Ms. Lee. So I think this is a great segue into let's make it a little bit interactive. 
So a lot of the team player mindset we talked about, um, you know, with the active listening, the edge framework, uh, the perfectionist mindset versus taking all of those things into factor. But the, the fact is that we have a very diverse group today joining us. There's a lot of new team members. Uh, there are team members who are probably in their second year of engaging with the Husky Robotics, so they have learned a few things. They're still not in that realm of, uh, you know, working with the rest of the team or within that group. So what we want is uh, for you guys to share your thoughts on how this team culture mindset has helped you in your role, particularly any examples which has uh, helped you see the Husky Robotics culture make a positive impact on you and have you come back because that has helped you grow in your role or your skill set. So any particular example, and feel free to use it from any part of your cycle or pre-build season or the build or anything in a competition. Maybe there was a very uh, specific situation where the team had to respond and they came together and the culture played a key role in how you work together. That'll be case. So anybody wants to get started to share some thoughts? Uh, uh, I'll probably get started. Um, I'm Deb. I just wanted to uh, add on to this question and I'll uh, share a personal experience that I've had. This was last year doing a uh, preseason and I was uh, basically messing around with a heat gun and I accidentally uh, uh, burned some heat shrink the incorrect way. And um, I wasn't aware of that and I was pretty hesitant to admit it. But the mentor that was next to me uh, calmly explained to me what the consequences of that were, but they were never really aggressive or enforcing that I did something wrong or it was a very big mistake that can't be reversed. He just was very um, calm and explained to me that as a team, it's our job to use our resources as best as we can. So I think that's one way that taught me to adopt a team player mindset. And after that, every time something happened, um, I made sure to admit it as quickly as I could because I know I'm only benefiting the team by saying it and I don't need to be scared to admit something. And I think that mentor really helped and had a lasting impact on me and realizing that and being able to act on it. Greg, thanks Ed, for sharing that story. So yeah, that's yeah. again, the whole uh, perfection mindset, you know, having the, the courage to also admit being compassionate about it, being transparent in your approach. I think that was a great story. Thank you for sharing. Yeah, go ahead, uh, Avantika or Anvita, sorry. Um. Yeah, I joined robotics freshman year and I came on knowing nothing about robotics but the sub team that I joined they started off by having all the new members do small tasks so that um, we still felt like we could learn how to do everything um, on I'm on CNC so like they would progressively teach us like harder and harder things but they started off very simple and it, it felt like oh I could learn all of this and I think that was really beneficial to making me feel welcome as a new member. Great. That progressive approach, I think that's a great term to use uh, to, you know, feel somewhat confident and gain that uh, skill as well. Thanks. Aaron? Hello, I'm Aaron. I'm the current strategy, uh, one of the two current strategy leads. The uh, thing I wanted to share was uh, back when I first joined my sub team, uh, my current lead at the time. Um, so strategy for anyone who hasn't interacted with it much is half software, half kind of just thinking. And I am not a, I do not know code very well. I'm not a software guy. So when I was brought in, I was kind of nervous about that. And my lead at the time said, you should learn some coding. You should get relatively familiar with it. You're going to have to interact with it, but we're a sub team. You don't have to be perfect at everything on that we do because there are multiple people here. We can all specialize at something different. Great. Yeah, specialization, picking up uh, something that is specific and at the same time still being able to learn from it, that growth mindset help you, uh, you know, still be value, value to the team without having to go uh, you know, try to do something which you may not be great at or may not prefer. So 
Thanks for sharing, Aaron. Anybody else? Do we see any raised hands? Anybody else wants to share? Okay. I was hoping for a few more stories, but uh, I think I'm sure that everybody has a lot of experiences, especially from uh, you know when you have to be at a competition or something which requires an urgent design change. I'm sure that that's where the team culture really shines because you know when it comes to uh, situations where you are simply building, learning, sometimes you have the bandwidth to make those uh, learning changes. Uh, or skill set, but when it uh, urgent situation, when there is a safety concern, and how you deal with those situations, I think like Dev said, you know something where you made a mistake, but it's still not reactive. But if this was within a competition, still having the the way to handle that situation is very critical. That's where the the preparation or the mindset of the team culture comes into play. So this segues into a a concept which we call a uh, situation leadership and. Uh, without going into the definition, I think tying this together with the framework, uh, I think uh, we were talking about the edge framework in the beginning, you know, explain, demonstrate, guide, and enable. So some of those things resonates with how we talk about situation leadership. And now I think remove the word leadership is just a, a concept or a framework which helps you, you know, handle certain situations based on the type of activity uh, being conducted, you know, the situation you are in, in, in terms of is it somebody you're dealing with who is learning versus this is an urgent or a, a safety issue or uh, even what the outcome is. Maybe a collectively we're trying to enable the team, collectively trying to win a tournament. You know, so the objective might play into how you may handle the situation. And it doesn't have to be uh, somebody who's only in a lead position. This is everybody. Every task essentially warrants you to be a lead uh, for that activity. So the the edge framework, when we say explain, demonstrate, guide, enable. So think about demonstrate as being directing somebody to uh, help them you know, learn the task when you know they are somebody new to that skill set. And a lot of freshmen are there in this group or even sophomores who maybe have named, they not have dealt with a lot of the aspects we're talking about, or you are trying to learn a sub concept within your team as well. And you may take on a new role as you move forward uh, within the junior and senior year. So the explain, the explain part can resonate with the coaching aspect because there's somebody who is probably, you know, as you know, has the knowledge, but then is uh, maybe hesitant or as long as there is a motivation and um, growth mindset in there, you can easily coach uh, that person to then become confident in that skill and then it sort of gets into the realm of, okay, can I make this person skilled enough so that you can start delegating? And uh, this is where the enable part and then guide is supporting, you know, think about again, the edge framework and uh, enablement is getting to the part somewhat in the delegating phase. And delegating doesn't simply mean that you just hand off a task uh, where you know, you may think that this is uh, a skill or a task which does not require you to be engaged in because it's a low level activity. It could be just simply even a high level activity where you want to simply make sure you divide and conquer. The concept is that when you talk about delegating in the situation leadership that you want to slowly through the build season, through the pre-build season, I mean, you want to make sure as many people are enabled and skilled in their task so that you don't have to be managing and directing every task. Your skill set is very specific and you need to be focused on the right uh, areas where it has the highest impact, which means that you need to be in a mode of delegating. But before delegating, you need to enable your team, your mentors, your peers. And again, this is not about just leadership. So when you do that, that enables you to be more and more delegating. And in fact, self-awareness is important. So this is not just about somebody telling you to do a task. You need to be self-aware of your skill set, your uh, situation, and be able to ask for help, which could be, you know, help me coach on this activity, uh, help me coach on, uh, or help me delegate this task because you are confident to take it forward because you can see that somebody else could be focusing on other activity. So this situational aspect applies to everywhere. This is very, you know, 
uh, in workplace, they be this is like multi-day activity or training session. When, but for what and then in work culture, this is highly required because there are so many situations required which this warrants this. And situation leaders, again, as I said earlier, when it comes to critical phases like last minute design changes, during competition, trying to fix a robot, trying to make a strategy, that's where how you respond uh, is depends upon all the prep work you have done and all this team culture mindset we are talking about, right? So with that, uh, you know, we also want to talk about uh, essentially the strength of a team player. Now, all of these things are probably very obvious uh, <clears throat> based on what we have discussed all, already so far. And some of you gave examples which resonates, for example, for example being compassionate and, and, and being transparent, uh, having open communication, communication admitting your uh, situation fall or whatever the case may be. Uh, but having a growth mindset is very important before. If you don't have a growth mindset, there is no, uh, you may be directing, but then you may not be able to perform uh, the job in a way where, you, you know, the other team members can get confidence in supporting or delegating your task. So the active welcoming, which we were talking about before, relates to the, uh, you know, being humble, compassionate, courteous, self-awareness. We talked about being aware of your own emotional intelligence as we call it and then also being aware of your own skill set to ask for help or being able to uh, offer help and that's where you know the growth mindset comes parts comes in and uh, you know discipline to me is very very important because consistent and discipline discipline and consistent in your approach so that's where i think a lot of the aspect you guys do through uh, the pre bill and the bill season in you know managing your task, being disciplined in terms of uh, supporting your team, uh, robotics after dark, uh, all of the activities will become more intense when you go into the build phase and uh, being disciplined through that phase as well so that the you know other team members are confident in have confidence in each other that when they delegate they know that the discipline of the person is going to get the task done. So all of these aspects then not only being a team player but it helps create a very uh, dominant team culture, which then goes back to our mission and vision of robotics team to be able to achieve what we are talking about, right? So that that mission is really important unless, you know, and then how you do hand off your uh, team culture on to the next team, because once you are seniors and you go uh, off to college, the next team has to continue to take this uh, level forward. And I think I've seen this over the, last few years have been involved part-time is that uh, the team strength is growing every year and year. And by strength, I mean not just that uh, being in competition, winning it, the way the team is working together, the way you are recruiting new team members, uh, creating the strength of the team, that is uh, a strength which Husky Robotics definitely have. Right. So with that, let's also do something to reflect back. And uh, this is where uh, I think we haven't done a breakout session. We used to do the breakout session before. Um, this is where we want you guys to uh, go back into a few groups and broadly discuss all of the themes we talked about, the strategy of applying this team culture, team player mindset. Again, share a few examples you may have uh, from your past experience, or in fact, if you run into somebody who you already know, but those examples, especially from uh, the various phases all the way to competition, and then come back and we will talk about you know a few groups to share their thoughts and uh, what kind of specific uh, you know strengths and examples can I continue to reflect on the team player mindset, uh, which we just talked about. So what what aspects of that team player mindset and what frameworks has helped you in uh, you know applying that strength to the team? So. I know we said here's example, but I actually don't have example. I don't think I, <laughs> I created one. Uh, Mr. Smith, I think we had a previous slide on example, but rather um, than that, maybe, maybe uh, if you want, we can just... I let me see have... if I have anything handy. Um, while I look for that, let me um, ask, how long would you like the uh, breakout room to be? Uh, let's do... Four minutes. Yeah. 
That okay. sounds great. Like, yeah. like a four plus one type thing where it's, so just to explain to everyone, since this is the first time we've done this this year, you'll see a four minute counter in your breakout room. When that expires, you still have a minute to wrap up your conversation. So don't feel that um, you have to uh, come back right away. So you really get four plus one minutes or five minutes total for your discussion. So just keep that in way so that you're not um, not yeah. rushed. Um, in terms of examples, um, I'm trying to think. So, Mr. Gupta, did you want me to share some that we've talked about in the past just to like kind of set the stage? Would that be helpful? Sure, yeah, that would be helpful. Okay, so... Yeah. Um, looking back a, a couple of years, um, like in 2022, we re-evaluated what Swerve modules um, we were using because at the time we were using a custom Swerve design. And so that year we revised our custom Swerve design um, and made a lot of improvements to it. But we also researched the best ones out there that we could buy commercially. Um, and so this was a, an example of um, kind of a make versus buy decision and being comfortable with the idea that we don't have to invent everything ourselves um, because in the end, we decided to purchase Swerve Drive Specialties MK4 Swerve modules back then. Um, similarly, like last year, no, just kidding, 2023, a couple of years ago when April tags were a brand new technology, we also similarly um, were comfortable with, we don't have to write all that software ourselves. And we decided to leverage Photon Vision. Um, and that saved us a huge amount of effort and made us made us successful. So I think those are some of the, those are like examples of, of ones. Um, I think I saw in one of um, Jesse's slides earlier, a reference to breadcrumbs. Um, that can relate to, to the discipline part and some other parts. The idea of breadcrumbs are these little messages we leave ourselves and others, um, whether that's in linear or in a Google Doc or written on Sharpie on the bag with the half-finished thing in it, um, whatever it happens to be, so that when we come back to the next meeting, we and others remember where we are and what's next. Um, is, is that Are those a couple of good ones? Yeah, well, that's perfect. So I'm going to open up the breakout rooms. Uh, it should move you there automatically, or you can click on the little button. Oh, Aaron, you've got a question? Yeah, go ahead before we go. Now that we've gone through these examples, is there a quick way for us to look at which strength we're supposed to be discussing? Yeah, I noticed this says each breakout room will be assigned a strength. I think we are opening it up to whatever is most impactful for you. Is that right? Yeah, I mean, because uh, you will have a few members in your group, I think based on the stories, uh, I'm putting that in the chat as well, based on the example of stories each one shares, uh, I would say pick one as part of your discussion and then come back highlighting that strength. Thank you, that's a good question. Great. All right, so I'm gonna click on the button to open the rooms. And we'll see everyone back in uh, five minutes. Remember, four plus one. Here we go. All right. <clears throat> Welcome back, everyone. Besides a few glitches, I hope you had enough time to have a chat about the team player and the strengths or picking up one uh, strength. So let's share a few examples. Uh, who wants to get started? Let's not. Have me call out notes. Adam, you're the first one always. Come on. <laughs> Let's go. Hello again. Yes. Um, my group decided to talk about transparency and communication. And specifically, we tied that back to uh, two examples that we use frequently throughout the season. One being stand-up meetings at dinner mm. of making sure that the whole team is updated on everything we do day in, day out. And the other one being in very early build season during like game reveal and stuff, how we try to make sure that we're communicating every idea that comes up and deciding on what we're going to do early on and in the presence of everybody so that we know how we're moving forward throughout the season. Nice. Perfect. That's awesome. Yeah. 
And that's also, <clears throat> in my opinion, talks about discipline, doing that on a continuous basis, especially the stand-up meetings. Yeah. Right? Thank you. Franklin? Yes. Hi, I'm Franklin. I'm one of the captains on the systems integration specialist. And before that, I was in mechanical a lot. And my room talked about discipline, which was that in mechanical, especially if you have one project that you're trying to work with throughout all of build season, if you have six weeks and you're catting the drivetrain for six weeks, it's important that you stay disciplined in your work and ensure that you're able to see the project from start all the way through completion to make sure it doesn't get lost along the way and that we keep breadcrumbs and all of that. Yeah. Oh, perfect. And then having a, a plan in place helps with the discipline aspect. aspect. Definitely. Yeah, right. exactly. Oh, thanks, Franklin. Autumn? Yeah, so... Uh, my group, we talked about how we had to redesign our robot late into the season, last seating, season, and tying that back to transparency and something that I was a big part of that redesign and something I didn't do that well, but I learned a lot from is that um, you have to, every small conversation, you have to keep everybody involved in and to make sure that you're getting all the input you can possibly can and in and also outputting as much information as you can about your what you think you should do what you think the team should do and what um like and so that everybody is on the same page when we actually have to make big decisions that everybody is on like on the same playing field when making that decision. Definitely. Yeah. No, that was a big redesign and very well done by the team last year that uh, also held where we were last year in terms of competition and decision. So I'm also tying that to the situation leadership aspect because I'm sure maybe I don't know if Lotum or anybody wants to share that in that situation, <clears throat> I'm sure there was a lot of delegation and directing right to this task because it is critical you have only a few days to get it happen so and that is you have less time explaining and and coaching but you have to make sure that at least there is a lot of delegation and directing happening would that would that uh, be the case and was there any specific example in that yeah um i was in charge of the shooter last year uh, i was a feature project manager and um in that role, there's the a big balance in general, but more specifically even then is the what do you do yourself and what do you delegate to others, like knowing your skill set. So I can CAD, but I like not everything that would pertain to shooter in that redesign I could do. So I had to delegate to some others. Um also prototyping we were trying out new things constantly and I had to, I had to delegate to a whole bunch of people uh, in assembly and just so that we could get everything done in time. So, and do that without like wasting time. Yeah. I think a lot of you guys shared in the chat earlier, iterating through the process and being self-aware of your skills and delegating is key. Awesome. Other rooms? Want to share one or two more stories? Yeah, go ahead. Who's next? Uh, go ahead, Addy. Addy, yeah. Uh, yeah, so for our group, we talked about growth mindset. And we talked about how growth for growth mindset, it's not, it's not only just like reacting to any failures in a very positive manner, but also recognizing success when it does happen. And we talked about for examples, it's a lot of preseason. This can be applicable and during training and when everyone's trying to learn how to do stuff. And we all kind of had very similar examples of how this happened has happened to us during like when we first joined the team and how people around us can help make sure that that like everyone's reacting to any failures or anything very positively and encouraging everyone to make sure that they're encouraged to want to learn. Great. That's awesome. 
So growth mindset is especially important when it comes to new team members or in fact throughout their involvement. And that is very true in work culture as well. Uh, you will see a lot of growth when it comes to having that openness to learn. Uh, Mahi? Uh, so our group talked about compassion and like being and it's okay not to know everything because uh, last year, like I'm a sophomore last year when I joined, I joined a little late in the season. So when I was there for machining, like I didn't know a lot of the terms being used and like it was all really confusing to me and uh, really new. But like everyone around me was so compassionate and always helped me on like everything and taught me how to do it even if I asked like the same thing multiple times because I like forgot or something but uh being compassionate is definitely a great strength of our team because like even when our machining is over like after we built the robot and we all go to assembly like we still like help each other and do all of that so I think that's really nice yeah <clears throat> sort of a circle of life right you being compassionate cur courteous will come back to you or or to the rest of the teams as well Great. I think we covered a lot of the, all of the strengths. So that was really great. Thanks for sharing. And uh, <clears throat> I think the examples were really uh, impactful as well. So with that, let's wrap it up and uh, maybe how do we want to do it? Mr. Schmidt, is that going through the rest of it? But I think uh, some of these, uh, as we said, the slides will be shared with you, all of you uh, as well for reference uh, and the recorded session. So if anybody has not been able to join, Definitely encourage them because this this particular session I feel is very important for everybody in the team and not just uh, the leads. And definitely um, while you're at robotics, if you have questions, if you want to talk to mentors, we're we're all really passionate about this. We care a lot about it, so we're happy to talk about it anytime. All right. Okay. Well, let's give uh, Mr. Gupta and Jesse a huge round of applause. You can clap yourself, or you can click on the little React thing and clap away that way too. Um, but thank you both so much. This was fantastic. Um, next Monday, we will be doing crucial conversations. Uh, so please come back and join in us next Monday for that. Um, and then you can see here on the, on the slides where we're headed after that, we'll do crucial influence and then vision and goals. So we mentors will be doing four sessions this year. Um, and then the fifth session will be uh, led by the captains. Um, to incorporate everything that we've talked about um, and refine our mission objectives and goals uh, for the upcoming season, which is always a, an important step and an exciting part. So um, thank you all again. And I will share. Oh, 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 I almost forgot this one. Thank you, Jesse. Um, yeah. This is really important. We really, really value your feedback. Um, so either like right now, um, I'm going to copy the link into the chat so you don't have to wait. Um, and you can open that up in your browser right now. So it's waiting for you for either tonight or tomorrow. Um, we'll send this out as well. Uh, but share some feedback um, on the session. And we're going to do this in our traditional keep, fix, try format, where you can share some things that you think we should keep doing, um, some things we should consider fixing, um, and some things that we should consider trying differently next time. So we mentors read through all of these um, when we're getting ready to do a new year. And so we, we definitely value your feedback there. Um, any, any closing thoughts? No. Thank you all. Really appreciate Thank you. your time. Thanks everybody. Yeah. We'll, we'll see you uh, back on the same zoom in a week. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you, Mr. Schmidt. Thank you everyone. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you. Thank you.